Well, it's been a week of records and anniversaries here at the Detroit Newspapers Michigan Open. They've played this historic event over a span of 90 years, and it's the 25th anniversary to be played here at the Grand Traverse Resort and Spa. So before we go to the record-breaking action, here's Mike Shields with PGA veteran and former Michigan Open winner Jack Seltzer with his son John and a trip down memory lane. We're live at the Bear at Grand Traverse Resort in Acme, Michigan. I'm Michael Patrick Shields with the, the newest uh, father and son dynamo, Jack and John Seltzer. Just uh, came off the course. Jack in an unfamiliar role as caddy uh, for his son John when Jack's usually making all the noise having won the event in 1987. Correct. This, this was fun today. It's fun for two days. I would have preferred to play golf, but uh, if I'm not, I uh, love to uh, work with John, and uh, we had a great time. Uh, he played great yesterday. Today we had a little trouble, but uh, it was a lot of fun. I enjoyed it. Before we go to John, let's talk back in 1987 when you did play four most excellent rounds. What, what were the circumstances about that day, and what do you remember most? Um, well, what I remember most was uh, I'd had the lead the year before every day until the last hole where uh, Tim uh, Matthews hit it close and won by a shot. And then the following year, I led every round again. And um, I came into the uh, ninth hole. I had just bogeyed eight, came into the ninth hole, and was ended up tied with uh, uh, Mark McNiff. And I made ace on nine and then shot 32 on the back to win by six. So that was, uh, that was an awful lot of fun, especially making the hole in one on the, on the last day. What's it like now to take advice from your father? I mean, you take advice from him all your life, and now you're on the golf course. Can you take your advice from him easier on the golf course than in real life? I think uh, maybe the first couple times that we that we did this, that I played up here, we played some practice rounds together, and uh, I think now that I've got the, the lay of the land, more often than not, uh, I just need his eyes on the on the putting green. He's no, your father uh, is known for his acerbic sense of humor if you'll allow me to say that. Do you think you have his sense of humor? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do, <laughs> unquestionably. Does it take a sense of humor to win on the bear, do you think? Oh, yeah, you better have a sense of humor because it, it comes after you in, in aces. It comes at you very hard. Uh, you know, it, it happened to John to, uh, this week. You know, he made 13 birdies and an eagle, and, you know, he's, what, nine over? Ten over. Ten over with, you know, a couple quads and triples and doubles. And it happens to you. You know, every swing out here is a potential double bogey or worse. And, um, you know, he's a very, very good player, and he's he's going to be able to cut those out. I know it. Do you remember the initial reaction to the bear the first year in 1985 when the event was held here? What did the professionals think about the bear? That it was the hardest golf course that you can play golf on. And uh, it, that stayed that way for a long, long time. And it's, it still is. I mean, you know, today I think it, it, a lot of teeth here uh, with the wind, but uh, the caliber of players now, the way they can play golf now, and as far as, far they can, as far as they can hit it, it's reduced the golf course, made it a little easier, even though it is very, still very, very difficult. The record-breaking rounds for Michael Harris rang loud and clear all week. He started with consecutive 67s for the first two rounds and followed that with an impressive 65, good for a six-shot lead over Colby Beckstrom heading into the final round. So you hit it well, you put it well, and you, your mental game has been yeah. that's, that's pretty mean, good. I mean, when you get everything going, uh, I guess uh, 1700 is what's possible. But, uh, you know, it's tough to get everything going all the time. Uh, you know, every round, it's, uh, it's been good. How's dinner? Dinner going well? Yeah, I mean, uh, <laughs> went out with a couple guys. I mean, it's, uh, you know, try a different place every night, and uh, it's, it's been, it's just been a good week. You uh, talked about being comfortable here. Is that yeah. a factor to it? Yeah, I mean, I love, uh, I, sp I spent a lot of time in Trevor City. I love the area. I love the golf course. Uh, and, uh, yeah, it, it definitely helps to, to be comfortable around. Uh, I've played here a couple times already. Um, you know, everything's just kind of coming together. I'm, I'm just... The final round started ominously with a half hour rain delay and winds up to 22 miles per hour. But Harris started quickly with back to back birdies before bogeys on numbers five and nine. And that cut the lead to four, but it didn't last long after Harris hit a miraculous chip shot for an eagle on the 10th, and Harris was from there on in in full control. 
From number 10 on, Harris coasted in and put the icing on the cake with an appropriate birdie on the final hole to finish the day at three under par. And now it comes to Michael Harris. Uh, I, I know it's official. They've checked your card. I wondered if you actually played all the, the holes with the, the little numbers you've got. Um, but he, he didn't sneak up on anybody. Um, he's won our Tournament of Champions two times already. Um, he's an accomplished player, certainly. But what he did this week was uh, amazing, to say the least. So, uh, Michael, I congratulate you on, on excellent play. I know 20 under par is by far the lowest score um, here at Grand Travis Resort and Spa since we've been coming. Um, I don't believe it gets the all-time record, but I think we have to go back to about 1948 to have a score that was lower. And so I congratulate you, and we have some gifts for you. Michael's name engraved on the Standish tray. Michael Harris comes home to Michigan and wins the Michigan Open here at the Grand Traverse Resort and Spa. He does it in record fashion, and he uh, breaks the record by six shots, previously held by Scott Hebert. And he puts his name on the James Standish Trophy with some incredible names like Al Watrous and Walter Hagen. A pretty good week. This is Tim High reporting from the Michigan Open. Were you aware of the scoring record at the Michigan Open? Uh, no, I had no idea. Uh, I came off and Tim told me that uh, Colby, it would have been, uh, I think Colby's 14 under would have been a record uh, had my 20, or he tied it, uh, had my 20 under not. But that's the game. I mean, I mean, Colby could have shot 19 under and, and lost, I mean, to 20 under. I mean, it's just, you got to play well the right week and... Uh, it's, it's a lot in timing and professional golf, and sometimes, uh, sometimes it's just your time. And uh, I think this week was what was that for me. Mm -hmm.